Good to be with you on this Friday in the fourth week of Easter, May the 8th, 2020. Uh, during uh, Fridays, we have our men's Bible study that meets at 6.30 a.m. They've been working through the Minor Prophets, so I thought we would continue that process on Fridays as well. Uh, last week, we heard from Obadiah a little bit, everyone's favorite Minor Prophet. Now we actually get a much more familiar one, and that would be uh, Jonah is the next Minor Prophet that follows after Obadiah. Now, just a reminder, the Minor Prophets are not minor minor in terms of their content, just in the terms of their length. They're just much more brief than your major prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah. Uh, Jonah is well known because of uh, he ends up being swallowed by the great fish and being spat out and such, a Sunday school lesson that we've all learned and such. Now, I want to focus on Jonah chapter 1 this week, and specifically, uh, there in Jonah 1, you hear God call out to Jonah, Arise! He says, Arise, go to Nineveh, and proclaim to it. So, uh, Nineveh was the uh, rising capital of the Assyrians at that point in time, and they were a pretty bloody, uh, difficult group. And so Jonah chooses not to arise and go that direction, but instead, as you read the text of Jonah chapter 1, it says, so Jonah went down. He went down to Joppa, so geographically he goes down, or topographically he goes down to Joppa, because that is a, a shore city, so that he can get on a boat. And it, once he gets into the boat, it says that he went down into the recesses of the boat, down into the boat, and then once he's down in that boat, he goes down into a deep sleep. So this is part of the uh, literary artistry of Jonah chapter 1 that highlights Jonah's rebellion. He's told by God, arise and go to Nineveh, and he actually does the exact opposite. He goes down first to Joppa, then down further into the bowels of the ship, then down into a deep sleep, and eventually he's down into the sea. And with uh, when he's followed by the great fish, swallowed by the great fish, he ends up going down to the depths of the sea. So uh, one thing to keep in mind here is uh, our own ironic rebellion against God, because while Jonah is trying to flee from God. That's what the text actually says. He's trying to flee from the presence of God. When uh, he gets on board, there's a, a terrible storm that the Lord uh, sends to get Jonah's attention, to call him to repentance. And uh, when the uh, sailors ask him, hey, who are you and uh, what are you doing? He says, well, I'm a Hebrew and I worship Yahweh, who created the heavens and the earth, etc. In other words, he believes in a God who is over all things. So how do you run away from a God like that? Now, this is how sin doesn't make any sense. We live as if we are in control, as if we can make these decisions, and how often our sin is rebellion against the very things that we even confess regarding God and regarding ourselves. So that's point one. Be cognizant of how we ourselves rebel unwittingly or just unwisely uh, rebel against what God himself has revealed about himself and what we even believe about him. The second thing I would bring to your attention is this. When this big storm comes along, what you find is that the sailors each call to his own God. Now, one of the beautiful things in Jonah 1 is by the time that chapter is done, they are not calling on their own gods, but instead they call on Yahweh, the one true God. So that's a wonderful move that they move uh, to uh, call upon the true God. But also their natural instinct was to each call on his own God, their own idols. And it's a good reminder to us as well, when trouble comes along, when there is worry and anxiety, who do we trust in? Who do we look to to deliver us? We all have our own little gods that we think are going to bail us out. It could be modern science. It could be money. It could be any number of things. And notice with each of those, those are good gifts from God. Those are things that he gives for your benefit. And so you should rejoice in uh, what you're able to provide your family through your financial resources. You should also be thankful for the many blessings we have because of modern science. 
But that is not where you are to find your utmost confidence and faith. Instead, trust in the one who gives those very things to you. Now, this is true throughout our lives. We're always beset with those things that would vie for our faith, that would want to displace God as the one in whom we find our utmost confidence. So, be like those sailors. You may start off calling on your own God, but in the end, rejoice that you can call on Yahweh, that you can call on Christ as the one true God who gives answer to your need. Let's do that very thing. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we are beset by so many challenges, worries, and anxieties. Give us confidence that you hear us for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, so that we would not lose heart, but instead have confidence that you will deliver us as you know is best and in the time that you know is best. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.